Get ready, it's time for the podcast voted most likely to make you say, what the flock? It's the Talking Pools show. And here are your hosts, the dysfunctional duo of myth-debunking pool pros, Rudy Stankowitz and Andrea Nanini. Hold up, wait a minute. Hey guys, it's Rudy Stankowitz with the Talking Pools podcast, and I'm here with my co-host. Hello, I'm Andrea Nanini. So I just wanted to pick up where we left off last week. I know we were talking about animals and stuff, and uh, I I did a last-minute topic change and it threw you off. But this week, I'm not going to do that to you. Right now, you know exactly what we're going to be talking about, right? I think so. So today, we're going to be talking about how bounce dryer sheets can be used to clear a green pool. Bounce dryer sheets. Bounce dryer sheets. You're just throwing all kinds of shit at me. I've never heard that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You got me. Right now, I'm just making crap up just for the sake of making crap up. Before we, before we get into that, I want to pick up on something where we left off last week. Last week, we were talking about animals pooping in swimming pools, remember? And we're not going to talk about that, but I do want to talk about snakes. I love snakes. So in this one, there's going to be no crap. There's going to be no splash and dash, no dump and run, no shit and split. Not in this episode. But we are going to talk. I did want to talk a little bit about uh, venomous snakes specifically because I'm here in Florida and I took care of a lot of pools that backed right up or that were in Micanopy that backed right up onto Payne's Prairie. And if you've ever been there, you'd see that prairie is pretty much synonymous with big ass swamp. because This is huge and it's full of alligators, buffalo, uh, wild horses, things along those lines. But anyway, these homes, they all backed up right onto this swamp and a lot of really, really nice homes. And from time to time, I would see a venomous snake in a swimming pool. Well, I saw a lot of moccasins, water moccasins. I saw a lot of coral snakes. And you're always left with the decision, all right? If I scoop this thing out, where am I going to put it? I don't know. So I thought maybe I'd look into it and possibly offer this as a service because I don't want to scoop it out and just leave it in somebody's yard. I don't want to just leave it in their pool and risk some kids swimming and getting bit. So I have to figure out something to do with these. So I decided... You know, I could offer this as a service, and I would go about it the right way. So I contacted Florida Wildlife Control, FWC, up in Tallahassee, and I spoke to the main office. And there I spoke to the fellow in charge, and I asked him, what do I need to do to be able to do this? And he told me, in order to get a permit to possess a venomous species of reptile, I would need to have 1,000 hours of training with each species. Do you know how many venomous species of snake there are? I actually do. There are six venomous species of snake, and I make it my business to know which which ones are which. And how many of those species of venomous snake live in Florida out of that six? Uh, Only five of them in my area. I'm I'm in South Florida, but all six of them do live in Florida. In my area, so you get all six. (laughs) So obviously, a thousand hours of training on each one. That's not that's not going to work. That's you know six thousand hours and i don't know if the return on investments there so i told him well what i'll do is i'll just scoop them out and what he said was the minute that net leaves the water with a reptile with this venomous snake in it i am in possession of a venomous species and i need a permit wait 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 it gets better what he did say was is that i could shoot the snake shoot it in the pool and then remove the dead snake because a dead snake's not a venomous snake. It's just a dead snake. And then nobody cares. So could you imagine me out there poolside at this nice home in Micanopy and I draw my sidearm and, and I see, oh, look, there's a water moccasin over there. So I draw my sidearm and I start taking, sh- start taking shots at it. <laughs> can you imagine that? Um, I mean, in Micanopy, I've been there. Yes, I can imagine that. <laughs> You know, did you manage to go over to the town of Cross Creek while you were there? It's really, really close to Micanopy. That's where Marjorie Rawlings, the author of The Yearling, is from. Book? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The I went there. Far. I went. I, I know I have never read the book, but I went to when, the last time I was in Micanopy, actually, for my um, for my brother's wedding. So I do have family there. So it's OK for me to talk trash about the place. I've been there enough times anyway i love micanopy though for the whole did you know that they had a they filmed a uh, michael j fox movie there yeah doc hollywood back in the day back when i'm yep yeah a long time ago you so you can buy that movie in micanopy and you can also buy so it was funny story i went there for my brother's wedding 
I researched that the author lived there and then I like, you know, went down the memory lane with the movie and I went to try to buy the book because right like the day before we had gone to the whole, like historic district and like we walked right. up to all the antique stores and looked at where they filmed the movie and my cousin actually works at the brew or is it a brewery? It's a little cafe. My cousin works there um, and she volunteers at the museum. But anyway, after I learned about the author having lived there and based, I couldn't find the book. Did you go? The day before, the day before, I saw them. I saw like five copies in the antique stores. And then I was like, oh, let me go back to this one. I, I couldn't find it anywhere. I swear to God, it was that crazy. movie. Yeah, that movie was the beginning of a 10 minute long crush I had on Bridget Fonda. On um, what? Which movie? Doc Hollywood. Oh, really? Oh, that's right. She was in that. She was in that. that. Yes. All right. Next time that you're up there in Micanopy, you need to make sure that you get over to Cross Creek and check out this restaurant. It's called, um, well, The Yearling. It's called The Yearling. It's named after Marjorie Rowling's book, and it is the best of old Florida food. Seriously, if you want to experience old Florida in a restaurant, through a meal, through your mouth, and into your tummy, this is got to be the best place to go. I love it there. They have entertainment. Uh, the food is delicious. Everything from frog legs to venison to turtles to steak, you name it. Yeah. Now back in I'll Micanopy. Have to check it out. When you're in Micanopy, and, and not a lot of people know about this, but there's also another hidden gem. It's called Taste of Italy. Uh, it's run by a fellow named Antonio, really great guy, it makes the most fabulous food. I, I would swear that this is the best Italian food in the state of Florida. He ships everything in from Italy, New York, Chicago. He brings in all the best ingredients and it uses local foods as well, of course. And he mixes up. Uh, I've sat in Italy and had food that wasn't as good as his. So that's how good it is. The guy is a master of what he does, but it's hidden. Not a lot of people know about it. So a great place if you can uh, sneak in. It, that's, I don't think I've been there. So back in 2018, Lisa Pack, she's a Facebook user. She posted to Facebook a picture of her pool that was clear holding a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser above it. Now, you have some experience with this. So why don't you tell us what's going on here with this Magic Eraser fad? that's sweeping the nation so a few years ago i don't remember the exact year off the top of my head a woman had posted on facebook about how she had put a magic eraser in a pool and <laughs> magically the algae was gone from her pool at least that's where the whole kind of myth went i think her original post i saw that i did see that too right and it had it, ah, went, vi yes. it, it went viral didn't it yes it did totally viral yeah so she um she had posted that she put the magic eraser i think she had like an above ground pool and when she the famous picture is her holding it a green totally filled uh magic eraser sponge that cleared her pool apparently so of course you know all my friends were tagging me and asking me to comment and posting on my what you know calling me and just all these questions i kept getting about hey can i put you know can i do this can i use the magic eraser will it work you know what about this like suggesting it to me and i'm like all right well i gotta know more about this because this just seems weird to me so so what'd you do well i kind of went on i guess what you would call a deep dive <laughs> and i i really like scoured a whole bunch of the internet and then i was like well why don't i just ask the manufacturer like so i found a snopes article that was talking about when they had first come out um i forget the year again it was like way early 2000s so people were concerned about um just using them in their house basically i guess there was some little kid that the mother had given them a magic eraser to clean with because the little kid liked to clean and then as four-year-olds or two-year-olds or whatever as they do yeah, scrubbed himself so with the magic eraser he and then ended himself. up he did you know <laughs> and like i said little kids you know they do those kinds of things i had two i had two little kids they're older now but anyway so that kind of um blew up this whole um question as to whether or not they were going to be banned from being sold in stores because of their ingredients what's their ingredients 
So if you Google it and you go on Wikipedia, the they're melamine sponges. You have um, you might have melamine dishware or uh, plasticware in your cabinets because um, I forget the brand that's very famous that doesn't that's like unbreakable sold at all those big box stores. They actually make plates and silverware and cups and stuff out of melamine. Dixie. Um, they're a mart, a certain mart. Okay, mart. <laughs> Wall, Walmart. 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 Wall, all of them, everywhere. You but can it's do the whole, the whole Hannibal Lecter. Corel. The whole Hannibal Lecter. Is it Lecter Corel? One. Fab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look up the brand. I'm not sure of it, but yeah. So the, melamine is found in like you know the okay. So like a plastic ladle, that's melamine. Okay. Anyway, it's all. So when I you know, looked up the ingredients and stuff. It was um, sodium bisulfate, which um, Dry certified, pool oper- certified pool operators will recognize that. Um, formaldehyde. For dead people. And the third ingredient is going to escape me right now. Melamine? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so then I decided because... My question wasn't, are they being banned in stores? So I decided that I would ask the manufacturer because none of the information that I could find was, should you use this in a pool and is it okay? So I had come across some stuff where chlorine can interfere with formaldehyde and cause some byproducts. Also, I was told by a good friend who's really good with chemistry, sir, uh, that <laughs> when you add the uh, melamine to a water that already contains cyanuric acid, then you create another toxic byproduct, which... So anyway, I wanted to clear it up with the manufacturer, and that's when I emailed Mr. Clay, <laughs> my coveted response that I'm going to frame. And what, and what, pray tell, did Mr. Clean tell you? So the question I asked them was, is it safe or do you recommend... It was, do you recommend using magic erasers in pools to help clear up algae? As, you know, per the viral video, it was a whole email I wrote out. And what did the, and they, what did the great bald one say? <laughs> they, Mr. Clean himself emailed me, emailed me back, and he said, no, we, um, there might be ingredients that may interfere with the chemicals in the pools. And we do not recommend them for pool use. So, Mr. Clean, um, Mr. Clean, I, the big bald I guy, that. the big bald guy, he wrote you yes. back himself personally, and he, he did, said, was, he said, yes. no, nah, no way, don't do it. Step away from the pool. Correct. Get your magic eraser. Get your hands out of the skimmer. Get everybody out of the skimmer. That's it. Oh, well, you don't get better than that. Now, let me ask you this because I, well, I already know, but. You, Everybody listening doesn't know. You also tested this on your own, did you not? I did, and you can actually um, find the article about it in Pool and Spa News. All you have to do is Google my name, which, sorry I had to say that. I I mean, it is kind of cool because I would never, like, think that I would be the one to say, hey, Google me. But if you Google Magic Eraser and then Andrea Nanini, the first thing that pops up is the Pool and Spa News article. So I actually did. I collected a bunch of different water with varying stages of algae. I put a magic eraser in each one, and then I have my little control guy. And um, I still have algae in the jar with the magic eraser still, to this day. That was like four day. years ago. <laughs> Both melamine and cyanuric acid are produced during the heat degradation of urea. Sorry. So they make plates out of melamine? Are you telling me that we're eating off of PP plates? Those are PP plates. When these two come in contact with one another, they form an insoluble compound known as melamine cyanurate. Melamine cyanurate's insoluble. That's how your test kit works. At least that's how that test works. It's a turbidimetric test. It measures the cloudiness of the water. So being that this is insoluble, the more of it is, the cloudier the water it becomes. So the higher the cyanuric acid level, the greater the amount of melamine cyanurates that's produced, and the cloudier the water in that sample is. Now, did you know that that's also toxic? Uh, well, through my research, I learned that, yes, but I had not known that previously. My whole 
um, so part of my project was obviously I have my control. So I had just regular tap water. Then I had water that I added actual cyanuric acid to. It was like a tablespoon or whatever. And then I had my jars that I soaked the magic erasers in. So I was actually able to use um, the water with the uh, with one of the magic erasers. I was able to use that water as my testing reagent for the cyanuric acid. I was able to test with it just like I normally would if I had a number 13 reagent. It was basically the same thing. Wow. Wow. I reached out to Lisa Pack last year. I remember. Very, very nice lady. I spoke with her uh, well through Messenger on Facebook. And she's, of course, the lady who made the post that went viral about the pool. And she never said the pool was green. She was adamant that the pool was not green. She said that the pool was cloudy. And I asked her questions about it. And her cloudiness veered more toward haziness. So it wasn't horrific or anything along those lines. So she had a hazy pool. She put the magic eraser into the skimmer. And then the next day, the water was crystal clear. Now, can a magic eraser do that? I don't think so. She she believes it. She saw it. It happened at her pool. But I think something else might have been going on. I don't think it can clear the water. You don't <laughs> think it can clear the water. Nobody thinks it can clear the water. I've actually had somebody send me a picture of, um, they did a sand change. They changed out the sand in a sand filter. And there were actually bits of magic eraser in the sand. Stuck in the sand. Stuck, embedded into the filter sand. Um, so my advice would be, A, don't leave it in your skimmer. Like, don't just throw them in there and don't just let them soak overnight. People like to clean uh, the water line with them. You know, people will clean, like, whatever, the tile or, you know, some stuff like that. I think that's fine. I don't think that's going to... But getting back you know, to the pieces in the filter. So, and again, we don't know if that's harmful to people. Procter & Gamble, who owns the brand, they don't know if it's harmful to people in a school Correct. either, but they think that it could be, or they're just not sure? Uh, there, I would have to look at the exact wording. It's going to take me a second to find it, but it says the chemicals in the magic eraser may interfere with chemicals in the pool. So they're not sure. They're saying it's a possibility. Right. If your pool water is green, what is the right... What, do you, what is your go-to? What, what do you think, free, what would you recommend a person try to do, whether it's another pool professional, homeowner, aquatics facility? Aside from going to that magic eraser, what would be your go-to steps? Uh, the first thing you do is circulate the water. You make sure the filter's clean. You get it filtered. You get the pump. If the pump's not, you know, have the pump running. Have it going 24-7. Make sure that filter's clean so you have the, a good amount of flow. Um, and then you test the chemicals. Make sure, you know, see what you have going on in the pool. I've shown up to green pools and expected the pH to be super high, and it was super low. So you can't just guess. You have to make sure that you know the exact numbers of what's in that pool so that you can dose everything correctly. Um, you want a great... Uh, Normally, you want to get it to the breakpoint chlorination, which is a whole calculation. Um, obviously, you know, you have to balance that water. So that's going to be your second most important step. And then the filter is basically going to be your magic eraser, only like bigger and designed for that. So let the filter do its job. Let the chemicals do their jobs and brush. Brush the pool. Brushing the pool is one of the easiest preventative measures you can take to ensure that you don't get algae. Whether you see the algae or not, you should make brushing the pool part of your weekly routine. It doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't even have to be every week. But at least every other week, it dislodges the algae, whether you see it or not. Again, like I said, algae cells are microscopic, so you don't see it until there's a whole ton of it. And then it actually allows your filter to uh, filter it out and the chemicals to hit it from different angles. And it just works a lot better that way. After that, you hit the big three, disinfection, filtration, circulation. That is the absolute best way to kill algae. That is the absolute best way to prevent algae. If you have all those things in line, if you have... You know, assuming that you just opened a pool. I mean, a, a magic eraser's 
really not going to give you that. So, Mr. Clean Magic Erasers, a no-go for swimming pools. Removing venomous snakes, not unless you have the correct permit. And bounce dryer sheets? No way. Absolutely in. not. <laughs> I just, Absolutely it's not going to happen. Well, thanks for listening. I hope you guys um, don't use magic erasers in your pools and also don't yell at me for talking to Mr. Clean about it. I mean, I'm not the pool police. You told on everybody. Hey, big bald dude, you are not going to believe the shit they're putting in their pools. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Don't mess with my pools. They are mine. <laughs> so anyway, listen to us anywhere you can find podcasts. We're on Apple. We're on Spotify. Um, and we're on all the social medias. I still haven't got the TikTok yet going up, but of course I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey, really... TikToks are a lot of work. <laughs> hey, I'm Rudy Stankowitz. And I'm Andrea Nanini. And this has been the Talking Pools Show. We'll see you guys next week.